Welcome, welcome, welcome. I cannot believe we pulled this off. How you guys doing out there? What's up, what's up, what's up? At the moment, I'm just trying to get... Um, yeah, there we go. Okay, yes, we are doing the thing. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the Hobby Hall. And... Oh boy, how you guys doing out there? I am Solar Gray, the Cinematic Sorcerer, and I am here um, on the show that is literally the biggest production that we have every week. You know, uh, this is the show that we teach you guys how to make stuff, and we want you to, well, come along with us, make it with us. This show is live, and it's in real time over here on Twitch, so isn't that fun? Um, yeah, so today, we are going to be turning this and stuff like this into things like tables bookshelves and of course tiles if you guys saw a couple of weeks ago we did some work on making some walls but a house is not a home if there's only walls you know what i mean so we're going to be making a floor and ways for you guys to use these in your games um put them together in your display and all the stuff that you would use these diorama making skills for but first we got to get to business so let's get down to business while you send emails to back in the deck at gmail.com that's b-a-c-k-i-n-t-h-e-d-e-c-k -E -E at gmail.com um if you're watching this on youtube thank you for giving us a shout out like subscribe hit the bell and share please that would be really great we're trying to build the community and all of that jazz and um hit us up on the social medias like twitter and instagram just at back in the deck and of course if you are part of the wretched hive of scum and villainy that we call facebook join the group deckers on the book where you guys can see a whole bunch of cool stuff like the things that we make we post pictures and again uh you guys can talk to other deckers get to know the other people in the area or more to the point in the area of the internet and all that stuff so before we get started today um, I want to make a couple of quick announcements. I have been um, releasing all of our videos over on YouTube um, because of the whole CV-19 thing. Now, I know, I know, I know. You guys might be like, why don't you just go live on YouTube? Honestly, because I like Twitch. I like Twitch a lot better. Um, it doesn't crash as much. But um, even beyond the technical aspects that I do not deign to understand, um, I feel more comfortable here and I, um, I'm really happy with, um, the crowds that we're attracting here. The deckers here are awesome and I got to be consistent with what it, with whatever it is that I put out. So, um, so you're going to be joining us live here on Twitch. That's great. That's the time to talk in the chat. That's the time to, you know, um, ask me any short small questions and stuff like that now uh we're doing that to build the community and because we are on a few different platforms okay uh platform one is our soundcloud that's soundcloud.com slash bid underscore p and that's where i upload the audio of all of our shows and we do like interviews round tables a whole bunch of stuff that we do here and um honestly it's not just me and a talking head you know or should i say it's not just my talking head talking at you we got years of backlog so check out the stuff that we got over there at um soundcloud we also have a patreon if you can believe it yeah that's right um if you think that what we do here is more valuable to you than a singular refill of coffee a month then become a decker at a buck now we got lots of different tiers and um the tiers get different rewards we've got cool things like sculptures and um we make dice rollers and miniatures and all that stuff here but we don't do them to make stuff and sell it i don't want to open an ebay store this is what i do for a living so i don't really want to be 
Um, I don't want to be a manufacturer of game stuff. I, I don't, that, that's not really my thing. I like making the moving pictures, but for our higher tier things, we've got the Cthulhu Dice Roller, which is awesome. This is one of my favorites. And I'm um, looking around here, and I can't find Our Lady of Perpetual... Ah, there we go. And of course, Our Lady of Perpetual Crits. All of these, believe it or not, dice rollers. That's right. Um, we do what we can to design and build dice rollers for the people that are there. And if you guys are patrons, if you hit us at the $50 tier or on our royalty stance, um, then you qualify for one of these dice rollers. But even if you don't, you get a whole bunch of other cool stuff, including shout outs, because you definitely make stuff possible at the $20 a month or higher um, tier, like Her Majesty, the Queen, Shannon Boomlay, um, our King, Paul, um, David Mansfield, and of course, our ace in the hole, Jennifer Crow. So um, before we get started today, I wanted to talk to you guys. Hmm about the fact that I deal with a whole lot of techniques, okay? And I find techniques are valuable. And what is so valuable about techniques? Like, a lot of people look over and say, and why don't you just teach us how to make this one thing? I only have this one question, this one thing, right now, that's all, and I'm letting you guys know, um, that's not how good education works, okay? Um, we're listed here as an educational channel because I want you guys to have a really good grasp of these techniques and I want you to take these techni techniques and make whatever you can imagine, okay? Um, that is one of the big things about this show. Um, there's a whole lot of crafting channels out there and honestly, this one isn't the best and I watch a good amount of them. Um, you can too. You can totally watch um, Bardcraft. That dude out of Scandinavia is awesome, and he scares me with his butcher knife. Um, shout out to um, Rick Builds. Um, he is he is a gentleman from around my neck of the woods, except he lives in a colder place, and he focuses a lot on sci-fi and all that stuff. And of course, um, the whole GM Crafts Guild with GM Scotty and. Um, you know, we're talking like GM Scotty, we're talking, um, um, Wylock Armories, we're talking, of course, Black Magic Crafts. These guys are the reason that I bought a Proxon Cutter. Um, it was $100, but it's a tool, and I don't care where you live, where you come from, y'all know tools are not cheap, but they're worth every penny that you spend on them so um yeah i have i have a proxon wire cutter it cost a hundred dollars to buy and it is amazing um i am not regretful of saving up and getting that um at all and it's been able to really um pull out my techniques and give me a better understanding of the stuff that i'm doing so that i can show you guys because um there's an old statement a craft a craftsman is only as good as his tools or sorry. Oh man, I should run for president. <laughs> no, um, there's an old saying that only a poor craftsman blames his tools. And that is a statement that's fine, but only if everyone has the same tool. Okay, if you've got a hammer that the head is always flying off and other people around you don't, they're going to finish hammering whatever it is they're hammering before you will because you're going to have to keep stopping to grab your hammer. You, you, you see what I mean? Um, but the tool, the saying that I really like is the right tool for the job. Okay. Now, everything that we do here is based on not having a great, great, grandiose budget. Okay. I mean, that that's just, that's what we're doing here because not everybody can afford a hundred dollar tool here. Um... A lot of a lot of crafters that I know and I watch personally, they're like, you know, well, dude, no, that's stuff like the the XPS foam or pink foam or insulation foam or death foam, as um, they call it in the um, special effects industry. It's relatively cheap. Okay, I get my stuff for like seven dollars for a slab, but 
I have to go down to the hardware store. There's only one hardware store that sells it because selling it in enough to insulate a house in California is illegal. So all they can sell by law are two foot by two foot squares and those are $8 each. Um, and so when I'm crafting, I think back to when I was a kid. Um, I spent a lot of time making stuff when I was a kid. I would always do origami. I would forget to silence my phone. I would drop my pencil sharpener. Um, I, I would do everything I could to get my stuff out there. And I was always, always, always irritated that nothing I made looked cool. Nothing I made looked like any toys that I saw, even at the cheap, cheap, cheap Korean swap meets around the corner from my house. They're not there anymore. They left in 92. Um, and the primary reason for that was I didn't have a lot of the right tools. Um, I didn't have paint brushes that were small enough to paint action figures. Um, I didn't understand the differences between paint. Okay, um, in school, we only ever used tempera paint. That was it, tempera. And tempera dries very, well, it looks like good paint when it's in the bottle, but when it dries, it looks like you took a good paint and then you coated the whole thing in dust. Like, it coated the whole thing in chalk. Like, bang together chalkboard erasers. Okay, wait a second, I'm dating myself. Um, go to a construction site where they're doing drywall, grab some of that dust and just rub it on top of whatever it is that you're painting and that's what tempera paint looks like. So I didn't know what paints to use. I didn't know about brushes. Um, there are so many tiers of knowledge that I didn't have and they weren't available to me because um, where I live, they cut the art programs first. The closest thing we had to any art materials were Crayola crayons, um, Sharpies, and spray paint cans. That was it. That, that was what we had. Oh yeah, and temper paint. Um, didn't know much about brushes, didn't know much about any of that stuff. So um, I spent a good amount of time thinking that I wasn't very good, okay? Um, because, well, I can't draw with a pencil. I never could. I was never that even, like even when I was in college and I was taking my engineering courses for my physics major, um, my sketches were terrible, terrible. T-A-R-B-L-L-E, tarble. Um, but as I've gotten into crafts, um, like 15, 16, no, no, 2003. Got into crafting in 2003 um, for a war machine. And of course, um, I met people who went to school for the stuff. I learned dry brushing techniques from my boss at the game store. I learned a lot of different things. I learned a lot of different things. And I'm passing that on to you guys so that you don't have to quest in order to, um, in order to, um, what's the term I'm looking for? Oh yeah, you don't have to quest in order to and spend years finding out what only took people about 30 minutes to tell. You know, I mean, that that's a thing. A good amount of this stuff is practice and it's called art for a reason. It's not science, but science is there. Um, and I, I tend to think scientifically. So, um, the main tools that we use for this show is, let me find one that'll show up, a box cutter, cheap craft store paint, like Apple Barrel, um, this one says Doris, I got this at the local fabric store. These things are like two ounces and they're about a buck. Okay, they're about a buck per one of these. And this is the 21st century, so the five today is the equivalent of the one from when I was growing up. So you can get three or four of these for five bucks and you can use them and they'll last a while. Um, this is stuff that I got from Michael's um, Basics Paint. Now this tube was like seven bucks, but here's the thing about this tube. This particular tube is my black wash because whenever you buy paint from a tube, it's and then eventually it runs out. Um, but there's still a bunch of paint in there. So, so what do you do to get the paint out? And the answer is you put some water in it, you shake it up, 
and you've got a wash you just got to label it okay I've also got um, I spent 12 bucks to get a half gallon of this stuff and that's what we make our black bob and stuff out of and of course um, um, cheap brushes Dixie cups water you know that that's just what we got um, outside of that everything else is theory everything else is theory um, it's funny, some of my more well-to-do friends are like, Hey, so you're an artist. What is your medium? Do you illustrate? Do you animate? Uh, do you paint with oils? Are you a colored pencil man? I'm like, no, I use styrofoam. Nah, that's about it. And not just styrofoam. I use bird styrofoam. Bird, bird, bird. Bird styrofoam. What is it? Why do I call it bird styrofoam? Incoming dad joke because it's cheap, 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 cheap. This is foam core. Um, I do use death foam, um, but it took me a couple of years of hardcore crafting um, to find the foam, um, find the insulation foam, and to save up for my proxon. That that's just the whole thing. Um, I am not that precise a cutter with a butcher knife. I wish I were. Again, major shout out to Bard's Craft. Um, but yeah, so I use styrofoam. And my business mentor was like, well, styrofoam's okay, I guess, but it never stops looking like styrofoam. And I'm like, oh, I finally get to teach you something. Um, and I showed him some of the stuff I was working on. And he's like, that's foam? I'm like, yeah, that's styrofoam. Um, and these are a lot of techniques that I learned out of college when I was in special effects. I just never thought of applying them to such a small level. So the stuff that you guys learn on this show will be on a grand scale. Like if you're, if you want to make an entire bedroom look like a medieval tavern, this is one of the ways to do it. Um, if you want to make an entire living room looks like a sci-fi shuttle ship, hey, if you've got the money for that much foam, these techniques are exactly the way to do it. It just comes down to what size your tools are. And there's a saying in any production, good, fast, cheap. You can have two. <laughs> You'll never get all three um, unless you sling a whole bunch of different magics. So that's what I wanted to talk to you guys about today. And this will probably be a video on its own if I feel like editing out these 10 minutes. So these are the things about crafting that or at least crafting with me on this channel that you guys should know. And I say you should know because um, I'm trying to stay on top of the communications with everybody. You know, let everybody know what we're making every week, what materials they should have around, what materials they should go get. I get you. I totally get you. My recommendation is to pick up a few shades of brown. Um, I managed to pick up some inks from an art store and I bought my inks in primary colors. Primary colors. Um, because I can mix. So if I don't have exactly the right color, I can try and get the right color, I suppose. Um, and so I tend to use my acrylics. And um, I, I use my cheap acrylic paints like I showed you. And I mix them up to get whatever shade I need. And if it's not exactly the shade that I'm wanting, then I tend to add inks, red, blue, yellow. Just, and I experiment until I get the right color. Um, does my stuff match on the table? Not exactly. Do I care? No, because I make this stuff to play with. That, that, that's the whole thing. And if you're making a diorama, just something for display, um, the level that you have it, you know, again, I, I tell you guys all the time, um, doing crafts, doing anything creative, you only get out of it what you put into it. So the more care and patience that you show, the closer you'll get to that thing you actually imagine. And if you're doing it along with me, we're going to be going pretty fast and just kind of doing a speed build and everything just to understand the fundamentals. So that's um, that's what we do here. And, you know, um, the next thing is if you guys think I'm good, do not compare yourself to compare the stuff that you make to the stuff that I make if it discourages you. 
if you think, oh man, my stuff doesn't look that good, I promise mine, I'm not great. I'm really not. I'm not, I'm not that good. Um, but the stuff that I'm making currently is way better than the stuff that I was making when I first started. And I mean way better. Head and shoulders. And stomach. Like a whole upper body. Um, better than what I used to make. And I'm getting better all the time. And if you guys keep going at it, you'll get better too. So, let's get to making some furniture. I just gotta move this um, keyboard out of the way. Cabard, cabard. Now we're going to be making furniture out of a couple of different things. Um, I just went on that whole tirade, whole tirade uh, about how I do um, primarily styrofoam, but I'm going to show you guys a couple of shortcuts um, to essentially get something you can play with. So let's head over um, to the craft table. All right. See, we're at the craft table. Now, a lot of people, <laughs> uh, I'm starting to sound like the people I watch on YouTube. All right. Um, as I said, this show is live. It's live. It's, it's one of these live things. And um, the most fun part about doing this stuff live is you guys get to see what the drying time on stuff is. And, you know, one of the big questions when you're doing videos is... What do you have to offer that nobody else has? And I guess the one thing that we do here that isn't exactly done by a lot of other um by a lot of other channels is I guess the thing we have to bring to the party time management. <clears throat> um so today we are going to I said we we're going to make some floors, right? The very first thing that I like to do is I like to take some sort of project that I just don't care about. So we're going to start this, and we are going to start with a table. Okay? Now, the tables that I make, number one, um, we've talked once or twice before, and um, one of the major things that I make clear is that I like using the dimensions that are used on Wylock's armory for um, my dungeon tiles and my boards and he uses um, he uses one and one quarter inch squares and I am a fan of that technique and why am I a fan of that technique because I've had loads of maps over the course of my life. Loads and loads and loads of maps over the course of my life. I I have a printer. And when you have a printer, you print out loads of maps. Okay? Um, and the part about maps is when you have a one inch square, yeah, when you have a one inch square on a map, it's got to fit your figure. Now, one inches, if we take a good look at this board, it's for these squares. Boom. Now, if I were to bring the camera down a bit closer, you would see that the base of most small models are a little bit bigger than an inch. Okay, so that starts to add up if you start having figures in a line or something like that. Um, so I make everything an inch and a quarter, so I have a little bit of breathing room. Uh, breathing room for the stuff that I put on the map. You get me? Okay, so um, we're going to start with a table. Just a table. Okay, this little piece of wood here, this is going to be a table. Now, we start with our styrofoam. And I cut it what? Yeah like one inch by two and a quarter, you know, yeah, one inch by two and a quarter, that's good enough. I'm not really one for um, super precise measurements. I leave that to the pros, okay? And this is an important thing. We are going to make planks and wood grain. So we sharpen our pencil, okay? Get it to a nice sharp point. And we're gonna take our knife 
and we're gonna measure out maybe a quarter inch yeah about a quarter inch okay. and at a quarter inch or at a half an inch yeah we are gonna cut our styrofoam part way down we want deep grooves find that groove speaking of grooves I need some tunes yeah we gonna do some tunes cuz this is groovy it's very disco there we go so yeah and um so as I was saying cool I hope you guys can hear me a little better um yeah we only we only gouge our foam down the middle okay this will give us pronounced planks and now that we got that at a half inch we can go at about a quarter inch thank you Taz Tim Jetter for the music and thank you YouTube for the other music okay yeah see see what we got there all right their opening theme is some of the stuff that you get from YouTube for free so they won't copyright strike you and um, what we're listening to right now is a beat from Taz Tim Cheddar um, friend of mine that I met on that wretched hive of scum and villainy okay now check it out see these gouges let's see if I can get the um... well trust me they're there all right and now now that we've got those slits those are going to be our planks our definitive planks and now we take our sharp pencil and we just draw in our wood grain okay and the wood grain is up to you it don't have to be that big a deal there we go yeah some pronounced wood I like old wooden tables you know and you can do a whole lot with this okay now that we got some wood grain in there we're gonna take our pencil oh here's an important thing whenever you're making this look like wood you can't just focus on the top okay don't do a partial job finish what you start so we take that same pencil and again these are just light passes okay now wood has a grain okay wood has a grain if you look at a plank it looks like it's got all these lines going down the plank okay and that's what we're drawing in so the lines are going this way this way this way but what's what's this what is that what is that ah so we're just gonna take these lines And we do it over the top let's see if I can zoom in just a little bit yeah this is gonna be a super detailed job super detailed day. there we go look at that all right yeah so yeah we take our thing and we just head on down zip 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 because if you cut up a plank you're gonna see that grain all the way down now we find those grooves that we put in there we hold our pencil at an angle so we get that fat stuff in if you have a second pencil or a pen that isn't as sharp just let the pencil ride the grooves and boom there we go oh sorry yeah boom there we go look at that that's all the way up there focus camera there you go you see now we got wood grain and that's it that that's how to make wood so um, we're gonna take just a couple of uh, pieces of, of cardboard mm -hmm. oh no where are we gonna find a cardboard that's easy trash all right um, See, we got a box of pencils. And we're just gonna take 
a little bit from the top of the box of pencils here. There we go, because we want to make sure we can still do that. See, look at that, boom. That's called repurposing. And we are going to take our thing, and what we are going to do, now if you've got, um, if you have the luxury of having a paper slicer, good for you, you know, but, uh, but if you don't, we just take our ruler, now again, everything that we're doing, everything that we do on this channel, all the tools that we use on this channel, you can get at any bodega, any Dollar Tree, any 99 cent store. Hang on. Ah, there we go. Look at that. That's it. That, that's what we got. So, now, we are going to do double, double, double duty. Okay? I'm not going to inflict you guys with Nicolas Cage right now. But, we talk about the black bomb, right? Well, to do the black bomb, we take our black bomb, we take our stuff. Let us pull back. Yeah, we take our black bomb. Yeah, movie magic. It consists of moving stuff. Um, which is a little bit of water. A um, little bit of water. A little bit of glue. A little bit of black paint. That's what we got. A little water, a little glue, a little black paint. Okay? And... Now, some people use a product called Mod Podge. <clears throat> I love Mod Podge. What I don't like is that it was $14 for a gallon of wood glue, and it's $8 for this much. This is like, this thing here is like an eight ounce um, container. Yeah, Ziploc container, eight or 16 ounces, something like that. Um, in, 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 a, in a nutshell, Mod Podge costs twice as much. Now, what's good about Mod Podge, what I really like about it, is um, it's not just glue. It's got chemicals in it, it's got a resin, and that resin will actually solidify and make your piece water, um, watertight, okay? And that's important for this. But, as you guys see, when I say double duty, our black bomb is paint and glue. Okay, now again, this will add strength and rigidity to your piece. Okay, this is important. And I put the black in for the primary base coat. So we're take we're killing two birds with one stone right here, right now. Um if you think, yeah, but the glue is going to make it all chunky. Come on. If you ever played with Elmer's glue as a kid, you've put it on your skin. You know, you put it on the palm of your hand. You let it dry and you pulled it off going, ah, it's skin, ma. It's skin. You know. Um, so, you know, it's going gonna, it's gonna to dry very, very, very thin. But it's going to dry pretty solidly. Now, again, it's raining here in California. It's raining here in LA. That's right, it happens. We get rain, you know, we it, it, it rains here. Um, and this on its own is not gonna be waterproof. That happens when we hit it with the lacquer finish, you know, or the matte sealer from a spray can. Y'all know what I'm talking about. You know, you know, a little tagging hooligans, graffiti doing thugs. Anyway, um, I'm kidding, not like I was ever a tagger. Now, I don't like the green that I have here, so I'm just going to add more. And see? See what you got? It ain't perfect. All you got to do is just calm down, take a look, and understand that your patience will be rewarded. 
Now, I'm not going to do the bottom yet. Okay, because the bottom is not all that important. And I want stuff to dry. Okay, but since we have this thing slathered, slathered in glue, remember those, um, remember those little strips we cut? These guys right here. Now these are going to be our little bands because I don't know about you, but every table I have ever seen, ever, has had something to hold it together. Okay, so there we go. And now we take our black bomb and we just saturate. And that's what we're gonna do. Saturate there. And a lot of crafters are probably tearing their hair out right now. No, it's gonna be all chunky, no! Don't worry about it. Again, I make this stuff to play, not as an expression of art. There we go. If you're doing it as an expression of art, um, you would glue this to the styrofoam first and then black bomb all of it at once. You will be able to see a difference if you look really hard. And if anybody else is looking hard and all they have to comment on is, your thing looks chunky, then you can do what every black mom and every black grandmama do hand them the materials saying you want to do it yourself <laughs> you know so yeah there we go and now remember what i said about time management this is it now we probably gonna need some legs for this and we're gonna make some legs for this but don't worry about that right now because see the reason that we made that little thing to put it aside is because I said we were going to be making some tiles, right? <laughs> so, um, no, we're going to be doing a lot more than that. Why is it that I'm starting with a table? It's because every time you do a project, any sort of project, there's always the practice piece. All right? Now, let me fix this camera. Oh, no, I see. Can't get up. Ah. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, there's always something called a practice piece. There. Okay. And that is the first piece that we work on. Now, when you guys watch any craft show or food network or anything that shows you how to make stuff, their practice piece has been made way before they start the camera. Okay, way before they start the camera. Um, and the reason for that is it's limited time, there's all that stuff. So what they put on camera, they wanna make sure is the best that they have to present. Admirable, it really is. It's, it's very admirable that they wanna pull that off. Since we do this in real time, y'all are gonna wanna learn some time management, okay? Now, as I said, we're gonna make some dungeon tiles, okay? start with a square now you can make a square out of your foam core I'm using the XPS foam this week because it was a lot easier for me to cut my 5 inch by 5 inch square yep okay um with the Croxon cutter so I did full disclosure I am NOT being paid to talk about the Proxon um, I just love using the thing when I got it I'm like oh my god give me all the foam Hey, look. Oh, my God. Yeah, there we go. There's a TV box. Foam. There's more foam core. Foam. Okay, I can now spend eight bucks to go get the pink stuff. Foam. You know? Um, because for the life of me, I can't cut a straight line. Okay? But, yeah. So, what we're going to do on this now, um, we are going to do the exact same technique. Exact same technique. Okay? Um, but we're going to do it on the foam. Now, again... This thing is five inches. So what we're gonna do is we are gonna measure two and a half inches. We wanna go to that halfway point. Boop. And the halfway point down here. Boop. 
I'm making little dots in the foam because those little dots in the foam are going to be very, very, very useful. Okay, so at two and a half inches, two and a half inches, what we have is a straight line. Connect those two, boom. Okay, now what a lot of people do is they try and use one of these, okay, one of these squares. Now this square has a two and a half inch thing right there. The problem with using this thing is that it has a little lip on the bottom, so you have to put something down for it to sit on, and it gets just a little, er, uh, yeah, there we go. But we measure out two and a half inches there, okay? And we just take our sharp pencil, and we make a quick straight line. And then we move this to one and a quarter, because remember, one and a quarter plus one and a quarter equals one half, okay? And then we move this to 3.75. Yeah, we move this 3.75. I'm trying to do this well, but the camera angle is a thing. Yeah, and these did not come out straight. <laughs> but that's okay. That's okay. Because we don't need them to be super duper, super duper straight. Okay. Um, that's the best thing about working with wood. Okay. So what we're going to do now is we... Now, when you're doing flooring, especially old medieval type flooring, none of the things are going to end up being super straight. But what we're going to do is we are going to make planks, all right? So we take that and we use exactly the same technique as we did before. Exactly the same. No different. Mm, no different. All right? And what do I mean by no different? We take our cutter and we cut just a little bit. Hang on, what is on this thing? This is just... Ah being a pita yeah um we take those pencil lines that we've marked so softly so carefully okay and all right is this going to drive me nuts i think this is going to drive me nuts so 12 there and 11 and three quarters so that should be about there okay yeah all right, like I said, we mark the thing with the pencil first. And then we just score. Okay? We score down them lines. Okay, and again, it might be driving me nuts. But don't worry. Remember, scoring is just a tiny, 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 tiny little cut in there. Tiny little cut. Not even a whole big old cut. Just... Just a little thing, a little, little bit of thing, okay? Because I believe in miracles, okay? Yeah, tiny little thing. There we go. I'm barely putting any pressure because I don't want to cut through. These are going to be our pencil marks. And then we just eyeball the size of the floor planks. that we want to use okay that's it that's all we're doing just eyeballing and we're gonna cut those now y'all might be thinking but bush shoulder you're making all those cuts yeah you're making all those cuts in there but but what if it doesn't end up being strong or what if I cut through that's easy Take some chipboard, <coughs> um, or in my case, masonite, and cut it to a five by five piece. You know, chipboard is the stuff, is the cardboard that you find on the back of the legal pad. Um, and, you know, legal pad, like one of those legal pads of paper that don't close, but they, they flip upwards. They, you know, paper that flips.
comes up. You know, yeah, we take some of that. You cut out your thing to five inches by five inches. And you glue this square onto that square with whatever glue you got. And you good. Now, I'm in this weird pickle. Because, um... I keep all my construction tools over at my mom's house. But my mom is 67. So with the COVID-19 thing, um, I haven't risked going over there. Because, you know, I want my mom around for a while. And if she's got to shuffle off this mortal coil, I don't want it to be my fault. <laughs> You know, that, that's kind of where I'm coming from on that. All right, so. Now, if you guys notice, what we got here are just a bunch of long planks. Okay, long planks. So, this is boring, all right? But let me, um, let me put some of this in there. Ooh, dang. Wanna make sure y'all can see it on camera. There we go. Again, we take our not quite so sharp pencil and we just follow through. Okay? But yeah. But you see what we got here? Oh, that one's a little thick, so we're just going. Cool. One, two. Now, y'all can see. Oh, yeah, that came up. Hey, what's going on, Con? So, yeah, so this, boring, right? Um, But we have to add our wood grain. Now, if you notice, you're going to get a little bit of bowing. Wah, 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 wah. And that's why we're gonna glue this to something more solid. But remember what I said um, about the measurements? Okay, what I have here, this is a template of two and a half inches, boom, right? So you got around two and a half inches there. I use this for the little tiles, okay? So, actually no, nah, we'll just measure it. Gotta stop being lazy. Um, so we measure out our one and a quarter inch. Okay, boom, about one and a quarter. Okay, but what we're gonna do here is we're gonna measure out one and a quarter. With our ruler. Ooh, I totally knocked that off. Hang on, yay, real time. Give me just a sec. Ah, uh, God love doing bloopers. Yeah. So, before uh, we do that, I gotta make another one of these banding braces. Because, um,. I accidentally cut it off, <laughs> or not cut it off, but tore it off with that. So we're just gonna boom, put that down there, stick it on, gather up a little more of our black bomb, just a little. And again, just slot that on there, get that nice and wet. There we go. Now I was letting this rest and um and the water thing so it's still soft but yeah there we go see there it's in there are they straight no do they have to be no okay the number one important thing is that they stick in place so yeah clean up that little mistake so now as i was saying 
um, we take our inch and a quarter. Boom, right? Well, yeah, we take, oh uh, yeah, actually no, let's call it two and a half. Let's call it two and a half. Yeah, two and a half. And every once in a while on that two and a half, boom there, boom there. Again, measure twice, cut once is what they say. Uh-huh, see I gave it the wrong mark, there. Okay, and now we line up our marks with our, with our ruler, boom. And now, every once in a while, we're gonna cut, ooh, my pencil broke. Um, we're gonna cut some of these boards in half at certain places, okay? So I'm gonna go one board, one, two, three, one, two, right. one board, one, two, cut the third. 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 One, two, cut the third, okay? And um, this is why you keep a pencil sharpener around you. Because you're gonna break your pencil. It happens. Okay. And now that we did that one, two, cut the third thing, at the two and a half inch mark. Okay. And again, you could have done it with this thing. Boom, one, two, cut the third, boom. All right, so now we're gonna put at, making sure this is at the right spot, boom. Now we're gonna go to our one and a quarter, okay? Our one and a quarter mark. And at our one and a quarter mark, that's two and a half there. There we go. So at our one and a quarter mark, gonna make a little make a little mark. Okay. Then our one and a quarter mark here, we're gonna make a little mark. Okay. Now we're gonna line up our pencil. We're gonna line up our little marks. And now, as you guys can see, I did score one, two, score the third. 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 So now, over here, we're gonna do the same thing with the second. Boom. One, two, boom. So it should be center, and then there, and then nothing. Center, there, 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 nothing. All right, ooh, I messed up one. Well, that's okay. All right, so, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go over here and we're gonna measure that same inch and a quarter in here. Make our little mark. Mark it. Mark it. Good. So now, on all the places that there isn't already a thing, that is where we're gonna go. We're gonna go every third, okay? So, that was center, left, right. Center, left, right. Center, left, right. Center, left, Right. Ah, that's the one I messed up. It's okay. Center, 
center, left, right. Center, left, right. And there we go. All right. So. Oh, yep. All right. So now what are we going to do? Well, what we're going to do now is we're going to take our super sharp pencil and we are going to put four dots around every single one after we score or after we trace in all the little things we made. Boom. 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 Okay. There we go. Yeah. Now you see, I'm correcting the mistake I made a little earlier. So we're not going to do anything with that one. Don't worry, it won't show up. Okay. And there we go. Okay. Now, on all the ones that we just painted through, uh, we're going to take our super sharp pencil or a thumbtack. And we're just going to go, we're going to put four dots around it. Four dots. Four dots. Four dots. Okay. This might seem tedious, but trust me, we're doing this in real time, right? So. You see that mistake that I made right here? I'm just not going to put dots on it. All right. So that's it. And if you see, we now have a makeshift grid. Okay. It's gridded, but you can't really see it. So we've got boom, figure, boom, figure, boom. Okay. This is illusion. I love illusions. But yeah, so if you can see, that guy is there. That guy is there. And you can see them on the board. Isn't that fun? So now that we got all that stuff, we're gonna take our pencil and we're gonna add our wood grain. Now, I'm sure you guys have noticed that there is a little splinter here where my board isn't even because um, using tools bring a learning curve. Okay. So yeah, again, just gonna take that wood grain and we're gonna wood up the wood grain. Wood, 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 wood. Now, if you want a really fine wood grain, Okay. I'm not going for a fine, fine, fine wood grain, but if you want to go for a really fine, like almost paper thin um, wood grain, you can take a wire brush and just run it across. Okay, Just take a wire brush, run it across the thing, and it does the work super quick. Um, I've done that on quite a few things. I made some trees. And I did that, and the fact is, I didn't really like the way it looked. So, there we go.
there. Now, those dots that I used to say, hey, look, we made a grid, those are nail holes. <laughs> okay, go take a look at a wooden floor. And there's a lot of things that make regular wooden floors, not those super fancy corporate office things. Um, not those super fancy corporate office floors a thing, but, um, there, uh-huh, 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 okay. There. Now, you see those stray cuts that we made? Oh, wait. Where'd they go? Oh, they're not there anymore. They're all part of the wood texture now. Isn't that fun? So like I said, don't worry about making mistakes. Um, I know it gets real easy, and I'm sure you notice like, hey, these lines, that weren't that easy. No, it's starting to look like real handcrafted wood. And in truth, as longtime viewers of the show know, I'm not a big fan of the sh of the fantasy setting because you know, um, that whole medieval England thing and me being black and um, a lot of players don't know how to get their mind once they say forsooth and milady, they don't really know. There we go. Yeah. Now, I think I'm actually going to do that with a duller pencil, just to give the thing a little more character. Um, but, one thing I do like about crafting medieval stuff, from like medieval England, and medieval boats, and medieval Viking Age, is that there's a lot of room for error. If you mess up, you know, if you mess up on the initial art, you get a lot of leeway because of the words handcrafted, you know. Way, way back in them golden days, they didn't have machines like we have today. They couldn't mill out a perfect board, so they had to do it all by hand. There we go. So yeah. Now, one of the things about wood texture that I appreciate a lot is the legitimacy of the margin of error. I am a big fan of that margin of error. There we go. I know a lot of you guys are like, dude, why can't he just cut to when this thing is done? Like I said, time management and integrity. All right, now take a look at this. All right, you can barely see it now, but wait until we black bond it. But as I said, just for consistency's sake, we did all that wood grain. Now we do the wood grain across the across the edge of the board. Because again, we're making styrofoam look like wood. And these tiny little details, this 30 seconds of work per side, so this extra minute, will make it look so much more like a toy and less like something cobbled together. Okay, and now we do the other side. All right. And I'm a big fan of that. Okay. There we go. Now, quick science lesson. The reason that wood has grains is because wood comes from a tree, and a tree is like a big bunch of straws that have been gathered together, just a whole bunch of straws, right, a whole bunch of sticks, and um, that's how they transfer water up and down themselves, all right, but when you cut the tree apart, you expose that pipeline. And that's what the wood grain is. 
the wood grain is the pipeline of all these microscopic straws that you've busted up. That's why wood looks the way it does. Okay. And again, I have carpenter friends and, you know, snobby friends out there that are like, yes, but the grain of this type of wood, yes, if you can look at the grain patterns of mahogany and, and the way that it captured, blah, 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 you would never do that to such a good, to such a fine piece of southern English white oak. Oh, no. Um... <laughs> And I'm like, okay, well, you wouldn't. <laughs> but the people in my little game did. <laughs> you know. Oh, well, I'm doing a soothing thing. I hope y'all like the beats. Um, before we do anything else, I want to check in on NP City. How you guys doing? Hey, NP City. Yeah, soothing time. Soothing time. Yeah, look at what we're doing here. Yeah. And this is what I really like. Um, I'm doing this right now. And then when I wiggle... It comes up on the thing. Wiggle, 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 wiggle. So yeah. Um, so now um, we are going to grab one of our bigger brushes because this is a wider piece. Okay. And hey, Chasen, what's up, man? Uh, let's see here. Let us head back to here. No, we're going to go here. And all right. Yeah, so what we're going to be doing... Uh, is we're gonna take one of our new brushes. Again, there's a little bodega down the street from my place. And um, this whole packet, this packet of all these, if you see one of them is busted right here, but this whole packet was a dollar, okay? So before we got hit with the Rona, or you know, before the Rona came out and said, stay at home, um, I went down there and I spent 10 bucks. <laughs> well, seriously. Um, Hey, well, you know what, man? You know, we got Chasen TV over in um, the chat right now. And he's like, yeah, I'm lurking from work because supposedly I'm essential. Well, you know what, man? You were essential to me. All right? Seriously. Um, I, I, I'm i still super happy that you're here. I'm glad that you popped on and you like our work. You want to be more essential? Bring some friends. <laughs> no, um, but yeah, so... We're getting a bigger brush, just yeah, just a bit bigger. It's about what half an inch. I don't know. Let's measure it. I have no measuring tools that'll show up on the top of the green screen. Uh, okay, yeah, the brush is about a half inch thick. Yeah, just that, that's about it. And now we take our black bomb. All right, because um, yeah, we're gonna use this and um. And again, this is really important that we do this type of thing, you know, because again, we're trying to protect it and all that stuff. But really, that's right. <laughs> yep. Thank you. So <laughs> that's right. We got the call from Nicolas Cage. It's Nicolas Cage. And he's telling us to black it out. So, <laughs> uh, so yeah, so now we're gonna take our black bomb and we are going to do this. Now, I was just sitting up thinking, um, I, I was literally, like literally just sitting up thinking, okay, um, what can I do to keep showing these people that I'm live? And I'm like, you know what? I don't really care. Um, we're live, take my word for it. So, uh and it's like, well, he could do all this other stuff and we're all the same. And I'm like, yeah, I could. I don't, but I could. Okay. That's what we're going to do. We're just going to black out this whole thing. You know. Ooh, there we go. I'm not going to politicize this, but I am going to say be liberal <laughs> with the stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Be liberal with the black bombing. We want to make sure it gets into all those cracks and crevices. Um, whenever you make black bomb in, um, in a container like that, you're going to have to stir because sometimes the paint soaks all the way to the bottom. So you're going to have to get in there and you're going to have to stir. Um, and it's going to feel like all weird and icky. Yeah. Okay. 
there we go but yeah now some people like doing a bunch of little coats okay and I am a fan of doing little coats uh, to tell you the truth um, remember the reason that we put paint in this isn't just for our base coat it's to let us know if we missed a spot <laughs> okay because yeah um, occasionally I get work as a house painter okay I don't like it <laughs> you know but being a grown-up means that if you have a way to take care of yourself that's legal then you do it <laughs> it don't matter what you like you do the work you get up in the morning you go to work that's the thing that you're learning in school nobody wants to do it people don't wake up going yeah I can't wait to get back up that ladder in the wind <laughs> on a cold winter morning no 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 no. okay nobody likes doing that okay um I'm fortunate enough to do this for a living of course with your guys's help and I appreciate that you know so I can get up going oh this is cool I get to make tiles today sweet you know but um but the fact of the matter is even sometimes I get up and I'm just like uh like you know full disclosure because we're all about being on at least I'm all about being honest it's part of the magic I didn't fall asleep until like eight or nine this morning I just couldn't sleep um that's just you know sometimes I'm up all night sometimes I just get stuck in a state of awake okay and I don't like it I don't like being stuck in an awake state Okay. Don't like having insomnia, don't like having stress, but I do. And watch Dark Side of the Room, you'll get my story, and you'll see where the stress comes from. These things have effects. Um, I'm doing better than a lot of the people I grew up with. But that don't mean I'm, I'm doing perfect. Okay. Um, yeah, I got a call from one of my cousins going, Oh my God, I watched your show. I'm concerned about your anxiety. I'm like, because you know where it comes from. But we cool. We cool. Just, you know. It was nice. It, it was really nice to get a call from family, you know. But yeah. Um, but as I was saying, you know, yeah, we get up, we do the work. That's what we do. And um, when you're painting houses, yeah, when you're painting anything, a hundred thin layers is a lot faster than 15 thick layers when you cake it on it starts getting all wow you know it gets really chunky and it takes forever to dry but this is it we, we've now we've now blacked this one out okay um that is that's what we're doing so we're just gonna set this thing aside and we're gonna check on our first table okay this is almost ready for paint almost okay um so what we are gonna do now is we are gonna have a chat okay because we're literally waiting for this stuff to dry and I can talk to you guys for half a minute because um again we're waiting for stuff to dry it's still a little tacky see we are live all right <laughs> yeah there we go and see it's kind of soft to the touch Okay, but it's not totally ready to be painted yet. So, that's a thing. I've been meaning to put a fan in here. Now, <clears throat> um, one of the things that I find I deal with sometimes is um, when I'm making this stuff, you know, when I'm putting these things together and making this stuff, one thing I find I have to do a lot is clean my brushes. Um, I know you guys are like, but Thuler, they're so cheap. Why don't you? And I'm like, no, it's simple. I would rather have, <laughs> I would rather have a lot, and I mean a lot of, um, a lot of brushes that I can grab than one or two that I can't, you know? So that's a thing. Um, but yeah, you got to take care of your stuff, you know, uh, totally take care of your stuff. Now, again, I'm losing hairs 
Yeah, I'm losing hairs off of these brushes, but what do I expect for a dollar? But uh, that's a relatively easy fix. I just gotta take some pliers and go, <laughs> okay? Or take some glue and dip it in from the other side, but you know. But it's a little cleaner. And um, so what we're gonna do, as soon as I find, ah, there it is. I almost lost the piece. Um, as soon as I find the piece, what we're gonna do is we are gonna mix up some good brown paint. Now, this is a big thing. Um, I've got my um, I've got my easel, and we were using a melted chocolate when we put together those um, tavern walls. Thing is, I didn't like it that much. Okay, I really didn't. I didn't like the I I, I didn't like the color. Um, it wasn't the type of brown that I really liked. It was just too chocolatey which is something that if any of you guys ever see my eating habits outside of coffee and um, coffee, um, is something that you guys would be like, wait, too much chocolate? I don't think, I, I didn't know that those words were in your vocabulary. Um, but yeah, I wanted a brighter color. So, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna check out a different brown. Now this brown is nutmeg brown from Apple Barrel, okay? And this is a little closer to the brown that I like, but let's do a little bit of color theory in for a hot minute. Um, brown is made up of a few colors, um, primarily red and yellow. And by red and yellow, I mean orange, okay? It's like orange and red and you know throw in a little green so it's just a matter of like take some blue turn it up take some red turn it up and all that and the wood that i want is a little more red so we're going to take some of this nutmeg color and we are going to add a little bit of red now when you're mixing paints what you want to do when you mix paint is you put a decent dollop of your base color there just a decent decent dollar um <coughs> not like you know we don't want to do all that but you want to put a decent amount just uh, just a decent amount down and then when it comes to mixing up the rest of the paint you do it one drop at a time okay well, what does that look like well i put a decent dollop here decent dollop and as you can see, I got one drop of red in there. Just one. Okay, now let's see how this adds up. And the reason that we do it this way is because once you've added a bunch, um, you don't want to add too much. Okay, now yeah, see this went kind of pale, so I want to brighten it up. So I'm gonna take some of my yellow ink. I want to brighten it up. Um, the reason I don't do white when I'm mixing is because white lightens, but it doesn't brighten. Okay. Actually, yeah, that drop of yellow gave me something a little closer to what I wanted. Just a little. Okay. Yeah, just a little. So I am gonna do something wacky, which is I'm gonna add a quick drop of my black wash. Okay, because again, I always, there we go. That's it, that's it, that's all, that's all, that's it. No more, no more, that's it, that's all. See that right there, that little thing. Um, yeah, there we go. Now that's good. I took my nutmeg and I I put a quick dollop out there. I think it would be like five drops maybe. And um, then I added one drop of red acrylic paint and then one small drop of yellow ink. And then another small drop of black. There we go. Now we can take this table. Oh yeah. Yeah, that is what I'm looking at right there 
And what we're going to do with this is we are going to paint against the grain with a light touch because we don't want to fill in. Um, we don't want to completely fill in all those beautiful little veins and lines that we drew. Okay, we don't want to do that. We worked hard on that, y'all. We worked real hard on that. So, yeah. Okay. And see this, now, ideally, you would want to let the black bomb dry for a couple of hours. Okay, but again, this shows in real time. Yeah, as you guys can see, this thing is still a little modular, but we'll fix that. Okay, because if nothing else, I can always glue it on later. Again, it ain't nothing but a thing. Yeah, there we go. Okay, and this will probably take a couple of coats. Okay. Just a couple, you know. We're talking like Mr. and Mrs. Tanahasi. Just, just a couple of coats. Oh God, that was terrible. That was. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, guys. I really am. Ah, oh. again, it's the insomnia, lack of sleep. Um, I'm losing my good taste and humor, which is good because an ice cream pun almost came up, and y'all might be too young for that. You know, y'all, y'all might not know nothing about that. You know. God knows I don't know much about good humor. Now, um, so yeah. So we're just going to glue that on later. Yeah, that ain't going to be a thing. Okay. And yeah, boom. Now, I'm just going to paint the bottom of this because whenever you're doing three-dimensional art in any way, white stands out. But this is just the bottom of the table. Okay. Now, y'all might be wondering, well, hang on. If you're doing the bottom of the table... You know, what's it gonna stand on? We need legs. Yeah, you do. Okay. And we gonna make this closer to like a bench type table. So that's down. As you guys can see, it's already there. Now I'm just gonna take the, oh no, that's sticking. Uh, so I'm gonna leave that alone. Um, but yeah, so as y'all can see, it's already there. It's, it's, the brown is looking real good real good look at that okay we're pretty much ready for a second coat on this now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put like two or three two or three coats of this paint on here because um I want a nice nice wood I, I want I want no one to question whether or not this is styrofoam and any mistakes that you make during the construction phase, don't be hard on yourself, okay? You would be so surprised, so surprised at how much a couple of good coats of paint can fix. Not cover up, fix, all right? So yeah, this one's almost ready to paint because I put it on in a much thicker, I, I put this in a much thinner coat, so this is gonna dry a lot faster so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna talk to you guys real quick while I make up um, a little bit more of this and I'm not doing this on camera because I want to get it done quick and the act of filming actually slows things down so as I was saying a little bit earlier um what was I saying oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah. so Comparing the work you do to the work that you see, always a dangerous prospect, okay? Always a dangerous prospect. Um, because if you guys are watching from anywhere similar to what I grew up in, there are haters. Haters abound. I know. Whole bunch of people trying to tell you, man, your stuff don't look like that. His stuff looks good. Your stuff look like you. You're in C, no class, blah, 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 right? And 
Um, here is something that y'all got to know. Okay? Forget them. Just forget them. Okay? The people that talk about that, if you notice, they're not doing their own. And if they are doing their own and their stuff is better, you know, if you actually like someone's work better than your own, then you got a choice. Okay? You got a plethora of choices. But I am going to be super reductionist and tear it down to three. Choice number one, you can exhaust yourself by hating. Okay? And when I say by hating, I mean you can hate them, you can hate yourself, you can spend your time feeling sorry for yourself going, I'm never going to be good as Jamal. Man, Stacy's stuff is so good. How does she have such a good steady hand? Oh my God. Yeah, you can do that. That choice is before you. Um, You know. You could spend your time going, oh, God, I can't believe I can't do that. I'm stupid, stupid, stupid. You could do that. Um, choice number two. You can be like, wow. You know what, Cheryl? Your stuff look good, girl. You know, um, how do you do that thing? <laughs> you know, no, your stuff is real good. Um, can you teach me how you do how you do that thing you do? You know, um, and they might say yes, they might say no, but either way you ask. Or thing number three, um, you can literally head over to your quiet place, put on the theme to Karate Kid, and practice, practice, practice. You can literally just sit up being like, I'm the best around no one's gonna ever keep you down you know you, you could totally do that but those are three choices that are all yours i choose the one that i didn't um exactly put in front of you and i have patience with myself you know i do i try and have so much patience with myself i try and understand that the stuff that i do is not going to be the same as um as the stuff that the people I know do um and some of you guys know I teach okay I'm a private teacher and I'm always telling my students <laughs> don't give it away no I'm, yeah I'm giving it away I always tell my students to aim to be three inches better today than you were last time that's all three inches okay it's like I ain't asking for a whole bunch I'm just asking for three more inches of your time and effort that's it so while we're letting this stuff dry I got something to show y'all while I was talking I made up this one okay I made up this one let's see if yeah and I did all that stuff you see this stuff don't take that long but this is just a big large plank this is what I like to call a base piece and with my base piece, this is what I make other stuff out of, okay? So, I'm going to take my base piece, and I'm going to cut out about that much. You know, half an inch maybe, okay? And why am I cutting out half an inch? Well, I told you. We are going, there we go. Told you we're gonna make some legs, right? Now, there we go. So we got about a half an inch and it's that wood grain. So what are we gonna do with that wood grain? Well, we gonna make sure that the wood grain stays put. Ah, it's a sharp one. Yeah, making sure that wood grain is on there. Look at that wood grain. Oh, yeah, look at that. Oh, yeah, look at that there. And then we're going to do that wood grain down the side there, right? And then we're going to go down around there, right? But we don't really have to do the bottom, okay? We don't got to do the bottom. I am going to hook up my hot glue gun, okay? Because this, this is going to be cool and quick 
and steady and all that stuff. But what we're going to do now is we're going to measure out roughly the size of this. Now, I took my little thing and hey, look at that. It's about the same size, so we can just cut this directly in half. And why? We got legs now, bruh. Look at that. We got legs. Okay. But what we also have is an inside. So we're just going to take that inside and we're just going to give it the illusion of some wood grain because who's going to look down there? Okay. And this is what I'm going to do with the hot glue. All right, just like when we painted the bottom side of this, just gonna give it a little bit of scoring, just just a little, you don't need a whole lot. You know, we ain't Picasso, okay? We ain't trying to make art that will last the test of time. We're just trying to make some toys, all right? So while we wait for our hot glue to rise, we are gonna black bomb this just a little bit. A little bit of black bomb, okay? Yeah, just a little bit of black bomb. We're gonna let that dry. Then we're gonna take our paint and we're gonna paint this up. Okay. And again, the undersides don't have to be all that great. I'm sure you're noticing, I barely even dipped, dipped my thing. This was literally um, just a little bit of the black bomb that I had left on the brush after cleaning it. There we go. Okay, yeah, and that's all we gonna do. We'll take this, black it out. You know, give our little tribute to Nicolas Cage. Black it out there, black it out there. Now, with my glue gun, I am using currently my low temperature glue gun because I'm not doing a super big piece. And by super big, I mean super thick. If your glue gun is hot and it's high temperature, like my black one, um, <clears throat> you run the risk of melting your piece. Okay. Um, I don't want to do that. So let's uh, take a feel at this. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, so this one's about dry. Now you see I got a little bit here that's not exactly, but that's fine. That's perfectly fine. So while this guy is drying over here, and we take our little, oh, I did it, didn't I? I totally did it. Yeah, I did. Ah, there it is. Okay, yeah, we take, yeah, we're gonna take our piece and we're just gonna put that over there. Leave it over there, leave it alone. You know, it's like a little two-year-old will tell you, no, leave it alone, leave it alone. Okay, and now we are gonna take, yeah, we're gonna take our brush, and now we're just gonna put a layer of the brown on top of this guy. Okay, look at this. Okay, now, again, we're gonna do small layers. Okay, we're going with the grain of the wood a little bit on the larger piece. Why, you ask? We don't want to fill in all that stuff. Oh, because we're going to give this a serious, serious wash. We're going to give this a brown wash, possibly a black wash after. Okay? See, look at all that. Oh, look at that. Now, when you're painting, say, a house, you should really go from the middle out. But we're making toys, so who cares? Yeah, you see that right there? Boom. Okay. Craft paints are not the best. If you've got like miniatures paints, um, they give a lot of coverage, but they cost a lot more. I haven't actually done a project by project analysis between craft paints and miniatures paints. Okay. I really haven't. So. I don't know which is the better value, but what I do know is that one is more readily available to everyone than the other. Again, miniatures paints, 
Yeah, you can order them offline. That is definitely something that you can do if you've got an account that allows you to do a credit card. And the grown-ups out here, y'all cool, y'all good, you can do it. And if you can't do it, cool. Just remember that not everybody's like you, okay? There might be kids watching. And I'm not the hippest person, okay? My music might not be bop, my beats might not slap, and whatever new slang that there is out there going. But what I do figure is that kids, kids these days don't have credit cards. <laughs> and if you have a credit card in the third grade, cool, let me know if your parents are adopting. <laughs> Because um, if they'll give you a credit card, they might take on a 40-something-year-old man. So we're going to have to make some more paint. So like I said, now this was about the size when I did a dollop. That was a dollop right there. Dollop of that and then one drop of red. But we're going to double it up because we've got a lot to do. So now we're going to do two drops of red. One drop. Boop. Two drops. Boop. Okay. Now we're going to do two drops of yellow ink. And I got this at the Blick Art Supply Store. It's like Michael's, but it's the next step up. Drop, drop. And now we're going to give two drops of our black wash. One. Here we go. And now we mix it all together. And we turn yourself around. Ah! Got a lot of yellow in there. Oh well. None's perfect. Yeah, that's right. I dripped paint all over my thing. Okay. Ew, that looks horrible as it's mixing. But as it gets more mixed together, it gives us something closer to what we had. There we go. Yeah. There. Now, believe it or not, I know there's a lot of shine happening on that right now, but it's mostly dry. Well, remember our test piece? Remember this little guy? Okay. So now, we're going to put our second coat on this little guy. Hey, this little guy and see look at that freaking magic right oh my god look at that before after okay that's what we're talking about yeah now I don't know what kind of wood this is gonna look like I really don't I don't know what kind of wood this is gonna look like um but there we go. Yeah. Now that we know that that is what we are looking for, I mean, look at the difference. Look at the difference between these two. Boo, yeah, boo, yeah, look at that. Okay, so now we're gonna finish painting our floor. And again, um, I was thinking um, about taking this exact same technique and making a boat for you guys to look at. You know, making a boat for you guys to make. Um, because some people like boats, you know? Um, and there's always a place for a boat. Okay. Now, next week, we're going to use this technique similarly. But it's going to be a little easier. Because it's not going to take nearly as much effort. But we are going to do sci-fi. Because I like me some sci-fi. Ah, oh, yeah, you see that? Now, I'm sure you guys are noticing that the wood is drying in two different tones. And that's because I have it thinner in some parts, thicker in other parts. That is by design. Okay? The reason that I'm doing it like that is because I'm not good with a technique called light sourcing. And that means you paint up your thing 
with a definite understanding of where the light in the room is coming from, okay? Um, I'm not good at that, nor do I wish to get good at that. But one thing I do know is, um, is when it comes to things like light sourcing, um, that takes a lot of thought that I'm not willing to do because I'm not doing art. I'm making toys. Okay. Um, we can talk about light sourcing if the Patreons want to. Um, just, you know, send me a letter through Patreon. Um, yeah, got to get these sides. Make these sides look like wood. Wood, wood, wood. Wood, wood, wood. There we go. Yeah, there we are. Okay. Um, but I figured, um, I don't want you guys taking these techniques and only doing what I'm doing. Okay. Cause here's the thing. This is a floor that we made out of a bunch of planks. So what I would love to see is for you guys to head over to Deckers on the book after you make stuff like this and understand I'm making tiles. But what would you make out of wood? Okay. Um, there's a dude, I showed you guys a picture of his stuff a few weeks ago and this is just hitting me, which is why I don't have it queued up already. Um, you know, with this technique, you can make things like furniture, you know, because it's wood. You can make furniture out of wood. Um, you can do things we're waiting for stuff to dry again. Um, yeah, you can make stuff out of the wood. You know, so are you going to make wagons and carts? Um, you're going to make more furniture? Like I said, today we're making a table, but I use this technique to make a bookshelf. I've shown you guys that picture before. Um, you know, um, we can make a boat. We can make full-fledged houses. Matter of fact, the videos from the dude that I learned this stuff from, he took this very same technique, he made a boat on one hand, and then he took the mast, or not the mast, but he took the bow of the boat and turned it into a house. You know, because... He did this whole thing like, yes, and this crazy old lady is living in a shack. Brr. And the shack was made out of the front bow of the boat. And I'm like, that's cool. He added a door. <laughs> and um, that that was the whole thing. And I'm like, dude, that right there, that that's my jam. Okay, that right there is my jam. Um, so yeah, that's the number one thing that we got going. So yeah, so what we got here, although we're waiting for it to dry, is oh look at this look at that wow okay let's do a before and after before after okay before <laughs> after okay i mean yeah i mean look at this and again this was not all that hard um understand when i look that way Okay. When I'm looking this way, I am looking at the chat. That's what I'm doing. I'm looking at the chat with all their puns. Yes, you can make a ship of Theseus. However, if you go make the ship of Theseus, then first you got to make these pieces. And then next week, you got to take half of this off and then put another one on. And then a day after that, you have to take the other half of it off. And then you put that on and, you know, over and over at all at infinitum. Um, for some of you younger viewers out there, don't worry about it. You'll understand it when you get to college. Okay. So you guys might've been wondering why I pulled out the hot glue. Well, the hot glue is simple. Um, we gotta put them legs on, okay? So while we're waiting for this to dry, let's uh, 
Let's go back to the table. <laughs> Ship of Theseus, I swear to you. Okay. So yeah, so what we gonna do here? So we gonna take these things, okay? And we're just gonna see about where they fit. Okay, we're just gonna put a tiny bit of hot glue. And why hot glue? Because this is on the bottom and we wanna get this done relatively quick, right? So who's gonna look at the bottom? People. I ain't one of them, but there we go. It's on the bottom, boom. And now we're gonna do the same over here. Put it on the bottom. Put it on your head. Okay. We have a little bit of work time. There we go. And now, it worked! It worked! It worked! Yeah! Oh. It worked! We have a table! Look at our table. Oh, isn't she cute? Yeah, she's got a few um, things that are there, like a few strands here. And now we're going to... We keep losing our banding because we don't have a clean workspace. So, um, pro tip, clean your workspace, be responsible, do as I say, not as I do. Now, uh, <laughs> God, I'm terrible sometimes. So yeah, we're just going to take one of them spare scraps, go and put this out there. Now, the reason that we use these paper scraps and stuff um that one's not thick enough so we'll just yeah um yeah the reason that we use these over anything else is um the cardboard or the card stock is a little bit thicker and that thickness gives us a little bit of dimension Okay, because nothing is ever straight up flat. You know what I mean? So, yeah, so what we're gonna do, we're gonna take a tiny, tiny tie, tiny tie little bead. Hang on, yeah, we're gonna take tiny tie little bead and just put it straight across there. Boom. Okay, that's it. And now I'm gonna take the nozzle and we're just gonna spread it across just a little bit because I don't have one of those super fine nozzles and this has got to be done relatively quick because you don't get a lot of work time with hot glue when it's that thin as a matter of fact the hot glue that I just put on there just dried so yeah here we go hot glue and you could do this with PVA or rather Elmer's glue you could all right now that's on now that's all, we're just gonna cut off these edges, these the spare stuff. And we're gonna have to use our metallics to paint this good and proper. Okay, now some people, there we go. Yeah, that's all, look at that. All right, ain't that great, ain't that grand. Hey, hey. So we are gonna get one of our tiny, tiny, tiny brushes. Or actually, no, we're gonna get one of the brushes from this pack the smallest one that's in there okay and we are going to grab our silver paint okay just our silver and we are not even going to use that much just yet pure silver okay and when i say we ain't going to use that much we're literally going to use there that's it one drop on top of another cap and now we're just going to paint Okay, take that silver and just dab right across, right across the top there. See, just dab it and okay. dab it. Now some people would try and use a little gun metal. Some would use um, a gold, you know. I'm not big on gold or brass. 
but we are going to use a gold and a brass just to break up some of the color monotony. Yeah. Um, I'm thinking about giving you guys a thing on color theory, but see, yeah, you see what we got there? Look at that. That's just boom. We got a table. It, it is a functioning table. In fact, I'm going to give it a little bit of yellow just to, um, just to give it sort of a used gold feel. Okay. So we're just going to take some yellow. Yeah. We're just going to take some yellow ink. And we're just going to dab it right across the top. Okay, because, yeah, that yellow metallic. Okay, I could put a little brown in there. Okay, but yeah, see, now, now, I don't know if you guys can see the difference, but yeah, see, we have a little bit of a gold glimmer. Now, I've got some gold paint, um, but I didn't want to use it because you guys can totally see that I spent some time um, building up my collection of these cheap paints. Okay. Um, and I'm trying to go at y'all's pace. Y'all might not have the same collection. You know. Stanley once said that Every comic is someone's first comic. So I'm trying to treat this like every, um, like every one of these projects is someone's first. Okay. Now I can see that my little holes got a little filled up. So we're just going to do a little poke in here. You know? It happens. And you get in there, you look for your holes, and you open them back up. Because, see, these holes are the nails where, um, where the floor is nailed down. So we're just going to open them up. Okay? And um, what, we, what we're going to do next is, well... We've been here for almost two hours, okay? But in two hours, we made a table and we made a floor tile. But if you noticed, um, if you're not smiling for the camera like me and you just wanna knock this out, um, each of these tiles takes maybe 20, 30 minutes. Um, and again, I use the five inch variables because my squares are one and a quarter inch. And that means each of these tiles is four squares deep. Okay, four squares deep. So I'll be able to put four figures on each of these tiles. There we go. See, now they're back. All right. But this is going to take a little bit more time than we have to dry, and that's fine. But what we're going to do is we're now going to dry brush. Now, I wanted to talk to you guys about dry brushing. We're not going to dry brush this because in order to dry brush, you thing got to be dry. Who'd have thought? All right. But one of the things about dry brushing is... um. There are two ways to do it, okay? Um, now, our little table here, yeah. Our little table here, you know, this is good. Now, the two biggest techniques, ah, uh, that sucks, so I'm gonna fix that. The two biggest techniques that we use in regards to this stuff are dry brushes and inking. Now, they have advantages and disadvantages okay um by the way the interesting thing about this stuff is once you get this once you get good at doing this um you can pump out one of these tables in about 15 20 minutes which is good because none of this styrofoam stuff travels well unless 
you're an adult. <laughs> I'm sorry to tell you. That's just that's just how it go. Okay. Um. Yeah. Um. I, I hate that that's the truth, but that's the truth. If you're an adult, then you've had a lot of experience packing away things and stuff like that. Um. If you're not an adult, then you don't have that experience packing away things, and you're gonna break this stuff. And this is the truth behind the breaking of the stuff. Ready? Every time you break something, it is an opportunity to make another one. Now, I thought about saying it's an opportunity to make something better. Uh, it is. It is. I mean, that, that's the truth of it. It is an opportunity to make something better. But here's the fun thing about this stuff. If you're paying attention to what you're doing, if you really care about what you're doing, um, the next one that you make is going to be better because you get better every time. Every time you do this stuff, every project, you get a little better. This is one of the reasons that my stuff is starting to look better because I'm doing one of these for you guys every week. Every week I'm thinking about... Um, the next one I'm going to make, how it's going to look, and what projects can I put together that won't discourage you guys. So, yeah, and every week the stuff gets better. Um, but that's really the key. Now, there's an old saying, practice makes perfect. Not true. Practice makes permanent. Okay, whatever you do over and over and over again is what sticks. So if the next one that you make, you pay a little bit more attention, just three inches, three inches more on that whole scale, just a little bit more attention, three inches more attention, three inches more patience with yourself and three inches more thought. It's going to get better. And you'll be like, oh, man, now this one looks so good. I don't like all the last ones. So. That's one of the things. The second thing I wanted to talk to you guys about today, like I said, this dry brushing thing. Um, the techniques of dry brushing and inking. Now, a lot of people do both, and it just comes down to order of operations. When do you do which one? Today, we're going to start with dry brushing. And when you start with dry brushing, what I did here was I took some gray. Gray, gray, gray. I took um, country gray and I put a couple of dollops in there and I just took maybe a brush full in here and I stirred it up because I want I want a much paler thing and now I'm drying this off okay I'm wiping most of the paint off okay because my favorite part about dry brushing is you can always add more okay um, now we're just gonna drag perpendicular. And you see what the dry brushing does? Okay, let's take a look if I can get this up close. Okay, so here we have the thing as it stands, but I want more, I want more. So with our dry brush, I'm gonna dry off most of it, and then we are just going to scrape a scrape, scrape a scrape along the grain of the wood, okay, against the grain, okay, and this will bring out the detail of all the raised parts, and by bring out, I mean you'll really be able to see where you made those pencil indentations, okay, and the thing with dry brushing is you can always do more. Now. Dry brushing is, I believe, I think it's my favorite technique. I really do. I think the dry brushing is my favorite technique, which is why I have such terrible brushes. Okay, because dry brushing will kill your brush. Um, what some of the masters do is they will take, they'll go to the 99 cent store or the Dollar Tree or wherever, and they will um they'll buy makeup applicators 
you know, they will buy cheap little makeup applicators and they'll use those for dry brushing. And it's good because they hold a lot of paint and they have a lot of wide bristles. And again, they cost a dollar. Okay, so you see that there? Now, I'm gonna do a before and after, okay? Before, after. Can you guys see the difference between the two? There is the table on the floor. See, see what we got there? That is awesome, all right? But we're still not through because the second technique we're gonna do is a wash. Now here, I have a wash. Now this wash is mostly black, okay? It's mostly black and it's just some watered down paint, okay? A little bit of paint and a whole lot of water. We're talking like 10 to one. And as you can see, hmm, yep. When you put it inside the Dixie cup, it won't really make a whole lot of stuff, but let me use a new piece of foam and you'll see when I wipe it, you can see through it. And this is gonna dry even lighter. But I think, yeah. All right, so, but that's still a little too, um, it's still a little too thick. So to thin it out and to add a little character, I'm gonna add some of my ink. Now I would normally add water, but I didn't bring any <laughs> into, um, into the studio today. Like I said, I was up all night, I woke up late. Cool, yeah. Now, let's see the difference. Boom, yeah, right in there. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this and we're just gonna let it ride and then wipe it off. Now, the thinner your paint is, or the thinner your wash is, the more it'll get into all those places. Okay, and it'll make it look a little bit dirty, a little bit used, okay? Yeah, you see what I'm doing here? Putting it in. I'm letting it drip into those details. Okay, now if your wash is thin, then it'll just run that way and you won't have to do this dabbing like I'm doing, okay? Now, that's how I tend to roll, okay? And then after I do this dry brushing here, or after I do this inking here, once, once the wash is done, um, yeah, once the wash is through that, um, once it dries, I can put another dry brush of brown on it, and it'll look nice and dingy and grimy. But I ain't gonna do that for the floor. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add just a tiny bit of soapy water to, um, yeah, just a tiny bit of soapy water to my solution. Why you ask? Well, it thins it down and it breaks up um, that pigmentation so that you do not, you do not get nearly as much coverage, okay? Oh yeah, that flows a lot better, okay? It flows better, it's not as thick, and as you guys will be able to see here, now that I added some more soapy water, and that, is a lot closer to what we're looking for, okay? It's still a little chunky, and by chunky, I mean it still has a lot of good pigmentation, so we're just gonna add a little bit more soap, okay? And if you add a little soap, a lot of water, then you'll start getting good stuff, okay? Um, now we're gonna take our big brush, okay? And our big brush here, Needs cleaning anyway. Yeah, that's what we're talking about. Okay, 
So we're just going to clean that off. Rub it off now. Now, you guys are really going to see how this looks. Boom. See how that just flows right in there? That is what we're looking for. See? So yeah, so that's what we're going to do. Because now, it's time to do this. Now, I want you guys to listen very carefully. I am barely letting the brush touch the piece okay I'm literally just allowing the wash to do what it do okay I don't like working hard <laughs> so now that it's all thin and you see it just going in there right and don't worry it looks dark on camera, but it really isn't. It really is not that dark. Okay. There we go. That's it. That's the work. And now I'm going to take my trusty dusty towel and I'm just going to dab off the excess. And that's it. Just dab off that excess. Just dab it. Not whip, not nay nay, just dab. Okay, and this gives our floor a little bit of character. There we go. And now look at this guy. This looks like the floor of somewhere that people live. And that's what I look like. That's what I like. This, this is what I wanted. Look at that. Okay, now as soon as that dries, all we really have to do when this dries is just run a little bit of dry brush on top of that, and we are good to go. So, as we're doing that, I'm gonna just sit up here and help it dry. Ah, yes, yes, yes. So, um, these are the things that we got. And these things, like I said, they are so versatile. Now that I have this up, I could cut a little boat out of it and just use plank after plank after plank. Um, I could cut this into more furniture if I wanted to. I can cut the little slits and make a barrel if I like. Um, the possibilities are huge. Now, I've talked to you guys about a lot of things concerning these crafts and i mean a lot of things all right i'm just gonna uh put a little more dry brushing on top of this dryer um on top of this dryer piece of table to get some of my color back yeah there we go um yeah i've talked to you guys a lot about the techniques that we can use um, I've talked to you guys about knowing your intentions, okay, because that's really important. What is it that you were trying to make something look like? And the biggest thing, biggest thing that I want to push in to your brains is to be patient with yourself, you know? Um, so many people that I show crafting or martial arts or music or any of the other things that I do um, get so mad at themselves for not mastering something on their first day. This stuff takes time. Okay? Um, we have a saying here over at BidPay and you can see it with our video quality. And that saying is, the best is the enemy of good enough. And that is sort of an expansion on something that I learned when I was working in high technology. Because I want it to get everything perfect. I want it to ship the perfect piece. I wanted all my circuit boards to come out looking perfect. I wanted them neat. I wanted them functional. And they said, bro, we admire your passion, but 
finished is better than perfect. So get it done. Just get it done. Finish your piece. You know, finish your piece, get it done, get it out the door, and you would be so surprised. So, I mean, just shocked. Shocked and appalled at how much people will appreciate what you do. Okay? Again, I'm always stressing every week. What am I going to... What am I going to talk about on my shows? Do I talk about politics? Do I talk about COVID? Do I talk about, do I talk about, you know? Um, and I just come out here and I'm real with you guys. And I'm talking about real, really real. Um, I don't have an online persona. I'm me. This is what I'm like. I mean, granted, I have a little bit of an online persona because I don't cuss in front of you guys as much as I cuss in real life. Um, always got to make a couple of compromises. But, um, the more I do this, the more I grow, the more I get better, okay? And with you guys out there, you guys will get better as well. Okay, all of you guys, I don't care if you're 10 or if you're 50. The more you do this, the better at it you're going to get. And I just got a wacky idea, so I'm going to try that wacky idea. Check it out. I just got inspired. So, I told you that these holes are nail holes, right? I had some extra silver laying around, so I'm going to take a toothpick and I'm going to just... Pick a pick, right in those holes. Just toothpick, boop, boop. Just right in those holes where I can see that there's a nail. I'm gonna try and fill in that nail hole. Boom. You know, is this gonna look cool? I don't know. If it don't, I'll just paint over it. You know, some crafters will be like, no, what are you doing? Oh, that's terrible. Um, if we weren't under quarantine for the Rona, I probably would have went to the craft store and got myself some stick pens, like the kind that you have around the sewing machine. I like those. And those make great rivets for stuff. Yeah, no, I ain't feeling that. <laughs> it was an idea. That's okay. That'll come out in the dry brushing. So, dab, 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 dab. Yep. Let's get this a little drier. Okay. Um, yeah, see, sometimes stuff don't work. Okay. We're going to do a little dry brushing on top of all this. And then we should be able to wrap things up for today. But yeah, so... The more you do it, the better you get. If you pay attention and you're patient with yourself um that took me a long time that really took me until i was like in my 30s because i got i'll tell you all honestly i got a lot of haters <clears throat> i got a lot of people um that talk about stuff i think um it was tuesday tuesday i released a video on tough love and why it's a bad idea so then I got a lot of people that are trying to quote make me better in quote um, I believe that people progress at his or her own way in time and that way in time is influenced by how much work a person is willing to put into things I work very hard I'm always trying to grow. I'm always trying to learn. I'm always trying to pick up something new and all that jazz. Okay. And that's the choice that I make. But like you guys, I got a limited budget. <laughs> I mean, it's true. I love my patrons. You guys rock. I need more of you guys. Um, but since I got a limited budget, I can't make, I can't make a whole bunch of um, the quality that most folks think 
that stuff in Hollywood really is. Having worked in Hollywood, I can let you know, no, this is about the quality that stuff in Hollywood is. <laughs> um, everything else is lighting, camera angle, and editing techniques. But, um, but I want to get as good as I used to think things in Hollywood were. I would love to get to a Michelangelo type level one day. I would love that in theory. In practice, not so much. Like, nah, not so much in practice. I'm not really feeling that in practice. Um, but yeah, but this floor, I'm really happy. I'm, I'm really happy with the way that this floor is turning out. I'm liking the shades. And this is almost ready for a dry brush. Almost. Okay, I'm just, right now I'm trying to dab out the extra water that's in there. Because the particles are curing. Okay, the chemicals that make up the pigment, they are curing. And um, the water is evaporating. That's why I use it as a fan. It's not just because I'm I am so verklempt. No, 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 no. Um, yeah, we do this. Um, but yeah, I got a lot of haters out there. I really do. And the funny thing is, is, most people that have given me grief over this company, this channel, all the stuff that I'm doing over the past few years, never have they apologized. But a large percentage of them have come to me wanting help on starting their own thing, which in and of itself is sort of an apology. Um, I've gotten better and they're starting to learn now. And that's my whole point. Um, there are going to be haters out there all over the place. Okay. You can't let them get to you. You just got to keep doing what you love doing you just got to keep doing it um but do it because you love it do it not to shut them up but to shut up yourself that voice inside that's making you go yeah that guy yeah i find myself having to shut him up a lot okay and here we go but yeah, but I do this because I enjoy doing it. I never thought I would because all I saw was the work. Let's get back to the table. Now that this thing is about ready, okay, what we're gonna do is we're going to do a tiny bit of dry brushing with the original color that we had. Okay, we're gonna do that first. Okay, just to bring out a little more life. Okay, and on large surfaces, it's important to do it this way because the um, the inking makes it a lot darker and I like a little bit of a richer color okay so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this and again that same dry brushing technique I was telling you I'll stop at the halfway mark okay as I said I barely barely touching this thing okay barely I'm wiping the paint off the brush and I'm barely touching it okay now there are a lot of people out there that are crafting GM's I love those guys um and what that means is they're dungeon masters they're running games and stuff like that and the stuff that they craft they craft for the purpose of the game that is coming up. Yeah, look at that. Yeah, now you guys are seeing. Yeah, you guys are seeing how it's looking now, huh? Just a little bit, a little bit here, a little bit there. Okay, yeah, they craft for the thing that they're gonna be doing like this weekend. I got people coming over Saturday, so I gotta make this thing. Um. That is definitely a way to do it. Um, I don't normally run a lot of games. And I've got, well, I live in California. And people in California are fascinating. Um, 
if they can't have it their way, they'll quit. <laughs> so if I want to run a game and I want to use miniatures and stuff like that, they literally will either quit the game or they won't volunteer to show because, well, you spend too much time setting up the board or blah, blah, blah. The game doesn't flow the way that I want it to flow, that kind of thing. And they don't really want the level of immersion that's possible with this. That's cool. I play miniatures games. Um, and I'm good with that. Um, but yeah, I gotta give my hats off to all the people. Now, I've done half and half, and y'all see the difference now? Y'all see how it's really lightening up? Yeah, that, that's looking, that's looking neat. Okay, um, I gotta give my hats off to the GMs that can do that. I am not one of them, nor do I really wish to be one of them. Ooh, got a little black over there. Okay, yeah, there we go. And... Yeah, like I said, with this, I'm just barely letting it scrape. Barely letting it scrape. And truth, I'm using the monitor here in the studio <laughs> to see the difference. Okay, now. Yeah, that's right. I turn the piece instead of turning my hand. I don't like working hard. Or at least I don't like working harder than I, than I got it. There we go. Okay, and as you can see, sometimes it's a little darker in areas, it's a little lighter in other areas. But that's the first level. And as you can see, with the places that my hand is, yeah, you can... Alright, I'm losing bristles, but that's okay. Again, cheap brushes. Um, there we go. And the drier this brush gets, the more more force that we can add to it and that's cool so now we are going to take a lighter uh we're going to go with the toffee color okay oh yeah 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 you didn't think i was going to go there huh yeah we're going to take the coffee toffee color which is a couple of shades lighter not even going to bother cleaning off the brush okay and now we're going to bring out everything else and we're gonna call this done but we're not going to dry brush nearly as comprehensively we're just gonna bring out that color in a couple of places Ooh, a little too much a little too much it's okay when you're dry brushing something like that happens you can literally just take a paper towel or a towel and just wipe it off You'll have a little bit of a thing, but that's okay. We're dealing with floors. We don't need all the detail in the world. Yeah, there we go. A couple of places here, a couple of places there. Okay. See, that's it. That's all. Again, this is in real time. Okay. And now, yeah, that looks a little better. Hang on, I don't like this area here, so just gonna lighten that up a little more yeah line it up just a tiny bit more okay and now now we're gonna take one more thing we're gonna lighten this up just a little bit more so we can hit edges and highlights and then that'll be it that'll be it for the day now this show is really interesting in the sense Okay, we're gonna take a, just a little bit more of that country gray and we're gonna take like a brush full of that toffee mix it in with the country gray okay yeah look at that um the interesting thing about this show is twitch wants me to do like 75 hours that's my path to affiliate i gotta do like oh no oh sorry 25 hours so I need to have a long show a week. You know, when we first started and I first made affiliate, I had a co-host, so my shows were about 90 minutes long, like 90 minutes each. And yeah, there we go. See what we got there? And again, I'm just barely, barely doing that. Yeah, we're just highlighting these edges. A little bit in the middle. So it doesn't look like we put the thing in a frame. Can you see? 
it's almost like we're wringing out the brush, but the brush is mostly dry. Okay. And this is the essential part of the dry brushing technique, whether you're doing wood or rock or pretty much anything that has edges. Okay. We do the dry brush along the edges so that we bring out the implied shape of the thing that we're doing. And again, then I just like to finish drying off the brush. And that's it. Now look at this. This, I am so happy with this. Let's take a good look. Boom. Yeah, foam always looks like foam, right? Matter of fact, oh, look at that. That's the thing on the back. Uh, boom, there we go. See, now we got there. We got a nice tavern floor. We got a table on top of it. And there we go. I'm not gonna give you guys a glamour shot this week because I'm having a few camera problems if you guys didn't already know, okay? But what I will do is I'll give you guys a pseudo glamour shot. Um, I'll give you guys a pseudo glamour shot. As I said, this is what we made today. Okay, there we go. Big conference table. <laughs> Big conference table, almost like a park bench on top of all that. And as you guys can see, look at that. That is happy. Everybody comes to feel it. Okay, before, after, before, after, before, after. Okay, and that's what we got. These are the things that we can put together. This is the stuff that we can make, okay? And um, again, we have so many uses for this. Um, I will post some pictures of the tavern walls that we made last week around this, and you will totally be able to see um, how good this is. As a matter of fact, what I might end up doing is and this all depends on how i feel for the rest of the day i might make another one of these and i'll take two of the tavern walls one and two and i'll probably just glue these down to the tavern walls and then i'll have two tiles of tavern walls i could do that or i can figure out a way to i i, I like having things that are flat and modular like this because i travel i take this stuff to gaming stores and and stuff like that but since we are um since we are under lockdown because of the because of the rona um i don't know i might make something more like a display piece i have to check how much space we have <coughs> here in the wizard's tower but i want to i definitely want to thank you guys for showing up yes this show was two and a half hours today um i don't know i might um I might split it in half or split it in sections for YouTube. We'll see how that goes. Um, but yeah, so I'll probably split it into like three or four parts for YouTube. And um, yeah, that could be a thing that I'll do. Um, ah, so that um, people can actually see like the whole process and all that jazz. But anyhow. Um, thank you guys for showing up today. Thank you guys for sticking it out. I know this is our long show, right? And we're like, yeah, no, no, we could be watching a movie. I could be watching Birds of Prey. I could be doing something. And know that I appreciate, um, I appreciate that you guys are sticking around and being here with us. Oh, that's so much better. Yay. Um, so yeah, um, but I definitely want to give a major thanks, major thanks to our folks over in NP City. Thank you guys. Thank you guys so hard um, for sticking with us, um, for being around. This is so neat and so nice for you guys to be there. And um, yeah, it's um, changing up the music because this is our time. I'm so glad we have this time together. Um, if you guys want to contact us, y'all know what to do. 
if you guys want to interact with us hey guess what it's too late we've been here for two and a half hours how much do you want i gotta have a life outside of this camera help um but just open up your keyboard hit us up at oh wait wrong one i said hit us up at back in the deck at gmail.com that's b-a-c-k-i-n-t-h-e-d-e-c-k -E -E at gmail.com um drop me an email um let me know um, what you guys think you guys can ask me questions and stuff like that um hit us up on the social media with your questions and comments and with pictures of your build you know hit, hit, hit us up on instagram and twitter and be like hey at back of the deck look at what i made ah, ha, ha. i watch the show and i follow you all and that's all cool and dandy also um if you're part of that wretched hive of scum and villainy that we know as facebook you can do the same just join the group deckers on the book it's the only thing that i check now um, and of course, come listen to some of our talk stuff over at um, SoundCloud if you guys like my little life lessons and my little stories and stuff like that. Because uh, over at SoundCloud, you can listen to all of them at your own pace whenever you feel like doing it. Because we upload the audio from our shows from Monday through Wednesday um, up here on SoundCloud. And that's all for free. Now we're on the other places, Stitcher and Spotify and Apple Tunes and all that stuff. But uh, yeah, SoundCloud is actually the one that pays us. Um, <coughs> I mean, that's just that's just how it goes. They, they, they're the ones that are willing to send us money before anyone else does. And with that money, um, since they're sending us money, I can set up the thing where you guys can download all of our episodes and keep them for free forever see that that's the whole thing so i'm just trying to make the community grow while being able to eat you know what i mean um and speaking of that if you guys want to help us out with this you know help us keep our bills paid help the channel going make it so that i don't have to go back to my other job once we're done with the covid 19 thing and i can do this stuff full time um head on over to patreon.com slash bid underscore p become a patron if what if what i'm doing here is worth the amount of a coffee refill then you can be a decker for a dollar a dollar a month that's it first of the month a dollar that's it one dollar you know um 100 pennies 10 dimes don't care just a dollar and um if you can do more i believe me i appreciate it and we start sending out stuff like you know, we've got the um, cinematic sorcerer miniature um, for a ten dollar um, for a ten dollar tier. I know I have one here, um, and I'm really proud of that thing because um, I spent some time designing it, and we make them here in house. Um, and it's a little miniature of myself. Where? Ah, here we go. Yeah, it's a little miniature of myself with my signature coffee. There we are. Yeah, take a look at that. Ooh, boo. I should probably paint this guy today. And um, yeah, you can have your own cinematic sorcerer for your D&D games or for your little miniatures games or whatever. Um, you know, you um, I threw those on at the $10 tier. Um, and at the $10 tier, let me know what scale you want it because I can we can make these in 28 millimeter or as far as 32 millimeter because I might want to play myself on Marvel Crisis Protocol. Who's to say? Um, and of course, hang on. Ah, so much better. So, so, so lovely. Um, and of course, um, you know, our dice rollers and our stickers and our keychains and all that jazz. But with that, um, with all that, I want to thank you guys for showing up again. Um, check out the contact information. Drop us a line. Um, as you guys can see, I'm very tired and I'm doing this by myself. So, you know, but yeah, so it's one of these things. <laughs> not, not Spaceballs the doll. And, you know, so send us an email. Hit us up on social media. Reach out and all that jazz. Remember, you guys aren't alone. There are people that love doing this stuff that are just like you, and you are welcome, because the only people that ain't welcomed are the ones that want to push all of us out. Y'all know who you are, and we know who you are, too. So remember, 
If anybody tells you guys that you can't like what you like because of the circumstances of your birth, be it race, religion, creed, gender identity, sexual orientation, your disability, or your budget, you just tell them to take any of those cards and put them back in the deck. This is Solar Gray, the Cinematic Sorcerer, saying thank you guys for joining me in the Hobby Hall. Ugh. <sighs>